Hey guys, what is up? Niad here with Film Comics Explained, and we are back for the final chapter of Predator Concrete Jungle, the first book of many in the first chapter of the enormous Predator Omnibus. When we had left, Rache discovered that the agents in liaison with General Phillips were planning on handing his partner over to the Predators. He was able to incapacitate them before making his way back to the precinct. Schaefer was also able to easily take out the General and the armed men waiting for them at the heliport. Raish and his partner reunited and decided that they were going to need more help if they were going to take on the invisible hunters, while the police, feds, and military were also on their backs. They found Carr, the leader of a criminal gang, who was hesitant at first, but upon being choked by the predator, he was beginning to believe it wasn't the police who took out his people. We returned to find Carr asking them what they are looking at, insisting that there is nothing out there. We then see Raish and Schaefer jump out of the hole as Schaefer tells him to shut up and run. We then see a massive laser-induced explosion hit the spot they just were. Schaefer yells at them to get down, and we see them all being propelled several feet due to the force of the blast. Schaefer tells them that they have to get off the street and find somewhere to make a stand. Carr is shocked to see the explosion come out of nowhere and asks them what they are up against. Schaefer puts the Predator helmet over his face and tells them to have a peek, revealing the alien ships hovering above the city and one in particular that was firing at their location. Carr says that this is wild and reminded him of the movie War of the Worlds. Schaefer informs him that they all died of a cold in that one, and points out that he didn't see the Predators reaching for a Kleenex. They jump in the van and make their escape. Schaefer tells them that as soon as they pick up their friend, all hell is going to break loose, asking if Carr wanted to rock and roll. Carr tells him he is keen for payback, and if they can supply the guns, he will be happy to handle the rest. We are told that the Sunday traffic was light as they cruised into Midtown. Dark clouds were rolling in, and you could almost touch the moisture in the air. Their police scanner informed them that the authorities had arrived at Carr's apartment to find it had been demolished. They make a quick pit stop to allow Carr to make a phone call. They reach the spot, and Carr tells them he will drive the van inside alone, and they will have to see, as his friends weren't always easy to convince. Raish disagrees, insisting he will not let him pass the guns out to his scumbag pals like party favors, but Schaefer insists they should let him go. He goes on to say if there are any problems, they can just kill him first. We see the two detectives waiting in an underground car park. Raish points out that it was funny that those things were past them technologically. Their ships made the space shuttle look like a matchbox toy, yet they still got off on hunting. Schaefer suggests that it's possible they were just like humans, in that technology removes them from their truer selves and takes them away from the beast inside. Maybe the hunt is their way of keeping the beast alive, or maybe they're just sadistic SOBs. We see Carr approaching with his heavily armed men. He tells them they put it to a vote and it was unanimous. Humans won, aliens zero. Schaefer then begins to brief all of them. He informs them that the things they were fighting against were invisible, except through the helmets which they all wear leading him to assume they must be invisible to each other too. He tells them to look for a weird shimmer in the air and shoot it with everything they have. He asks if there are any questions, and one of the thugs suggests that they shoot these two and take on the jewelry mart, but we see he is quickly knocked out by Schaefer, who asks if there are any more questions. Raish then asks him how he plans to lure the predators, and Schaefer runs into the open and tells him he has an idea. The Predators don't realize that they can see them through the helmet that they have, and figures that the arrogant bastards are getting cocky. He puts the helmet on and aims Carr's surface-to-air missile in the right direction. He tells the ship to come to Papa as we see the missile launch into its belly. We then see it make contact in a spectacular display, bringing the advanced alien ship down with one shot. Schaefer then yells, that should get their attention, before telling them all to move. They run onto the street and we can see Schaefer yelling at everybody to get away. He tells half of his men to jump on one side and tells the other half to come with him. Raish informs us that this type of action was Schaefer's cup of tea, but he was just a cop. We see a security guard come out of his store asking what was happening. Raish tells him that they were being attacked by monsters from outer space, which the guard mistakes as code for a horde of sale customers. Raish then looks at a photo of his family and explains that he was beginning to feel fear drifting in on him from the east. He tells us that he didn't want to die, just as Captain McComb arrives on the scene and tells them that the area is surrounded. He goes on to tell them that they have 10 seconds to surrender. Schaefer steps out and tells his captain that he doesn't know what he is doing. McComb then states that he will probably make assistant chief of police for taking him out and is about to shoot 
but they all begin to see a huge thing appear above them. Schaefer feels another zap in his tag and turns his head to reveal a predator ship hovering a few feet from the ground. The police car next to McComb then explodes, sending him flying, just as we begin to see a ship firing several lasers in all directions, creating chaos. Schaefer jumps out of the way and says that he thinks they are upset. Ray yells out that they're going to bring down half the city, and Schaefer jokes that that might make the apartments more affordable now. The captain reaches his police radio and asks for help, telling them that he had never seen anything like this, as his men are being shot by lasers. He looks up and asks, what are you? before begging for mercy. We then see a predator firing its laser from directly above him. It also begins firing its lasers at everyone running around it. One of Carr's men sneaks up behind it and is about to shoot, but it disappears from him before reappearing in another spot and firing a laser through his chest. Schaefer puts on the helmet and tells them that they need to keep moving. He asks them to lay down suppression fire. He is then knocked to the ground by a predator that punches his helmet off. Schaefer tells his partner that the helmet was gone and wasn't working, and that they are now blind. Raish runs up to him, yelling that they were all over them, helping him up as he does so. Schaefer then tells them that they are enjoying this, as we see people collapsing all around following a laser exit wound. We then see Raish himself getting hit by one of the laser shots, sending him flying through a window. It's at this point that the General and his men arrive. His soldiers fire at the Predators, while the General points his gun at Schaefer. He tells them the shit's in the fan now, saying that they had to do this the hard way. Schaefer asks him what was next, and if he still planned on negotiating with the Predators. Phillips admits that's what they wanted in Washington, but he himself was never much of a diplomat. He lets him know that his contingency was an airstrike. The General tells him that these aliens were starting to annoy him, asking why they don't just show themselves. Schaefer then says, why should they, before getting an idea. He tells the soldiers to look after Raish, while the rest of them aimed for the fire hydrants. We see water going everywhere, affecting the camouflage of the Predators, who are now visible. Carr then says, well I'll be damned, all they needed was a bath. The General orders him to get off the streets, as the helicopters were coming in for an airstrike in 30 seconds. Schaefer runs at the Predators and says that 30 seconds is all he needs. He jumps at one of them and hits it in the neck with a pipe, saying that was for wrecking his Sunday. We can also see Carr shooting another one through the chest with a shotgun. Raish is bleeding out on the ground and tells us that everything had become a blur. He could feel the General's choppers pounding down Fifth Ave. Schaefer had no love for anything, and Raish was wondering why he persisted. It's at this point that he remembers what he'd said about the beast and all of us. They had speculated on whether the hunt was the Predator's way of keeping the beast alive, before he realizes that Schaefer is doing the exact same thing. We then see a huge flash of light blinding Raish, who tells us that the thunder had brought on a new season. We see the Predator is in the process of choking Schaefer as it spots the helicopters approaching. Raish tells us that the rain was cool, almost soothing, and something seemed to change. The Predator lets him go and looks up to the helicopters. We see it beginning to laugh at the choppers. Raish tells us it was a monster's laugh, but it was human enough that they all caught the joke. The showdown had turned into a free-for-all. The Predator looks back at Schaefer as the others collect their dead and wounded and move back towards their ship. The tag on Schaefer's neck also deactivates, allowing him to pull it off with ease as he tells us it's done. The General suggests that they might have scared them off and that the Predators were too smart to start a fight they couldn't finish, but Schaefer quickly corrects him, saying that they could have wiped the city out without breaking a sweat, but that wasn't what they were here for. The situation had gotten out of hand and there was no more sport to it anymore. He tells the general to call off his choppers as the hunters were going home. He looks up and says, hunting season was over, and tells the predators that he will see them next year. Schaefer helps his partner up, who insists he is quitting and is not interested in his pension anymore. He jokes that he will be taking his wife and kids to somewhere more safe, like Beirut or LA, anywhere except here. We see the general yelling at the two, asking if they really believe they can just walk away from this as Manhattan was now a disaster area and Midtown had been leveled. He tells them New York will never be the same, and Schaefer simply replies by saying, you say it as if it were a bad thing. And that is the end of the first book in the Predator Omnibus, Predator Concrete Jungle. We'll be back with the second book, Cold War, very soon, after we've gotten through some other content. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and to subscribe to stay up to date on all my content.
Also, check out my Vidme and Patreon to stay up to date on all things Film Comics Explained. Subscribe to my Facebook to find out what content is coming out next and when. Alright guys, stay awesome. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.